This video is sponsored by Aniba.com. Aniba.com is a brand new digital gaming marketplace with the best deals and the lowest prices on all of the hottest newest games. Uh, use the code QuiGon, QuiGon one word as is shown on the screen right now for 3% off your purchase. You can find all the necessary links in the description. Anyway, enjoy the video. Hello there, how y'all doing? Thank you for joining the video. Because I do so many streams, I always nearly say thank you for doing the stream. Remember to leave a like if you're enjoying it. Still leave a like though, it's not a stream. Me saying it won't change it. But basically, in this video, I will be talking about Halo the Master Chief Collection. They uh, they release a lot of um, updates on the, I think it's Halo Waypoint. So I've just got it on my phone now. I'm just going to be reading. So yeah, HaloWaypoint.com. Uh, I'll be referencing an article that will be in the description of this video. Uh, so you can be like, so no one accuse me of being a lying bitch, of course. Um, and so that you can actually see it yourself, but they release kind of, I think yeah monthly updates on the development of Halo MCC on PC as a whole Halo Reach coming to the MCC on Xbox and Halo Reach coming to the MCC on PC and uh, In terms of beta flights and alpha flights and locked alphas and locked betas and stuff um, They release a lot of stuff uh, News about it uh, and I'll be re re sort of reacting to it. I was reading through it. I check it basically every day because I'm fucking so excited for this game. So excited, especially now that the word's kind of out that Ninja's going to be streaming a lot of Halo when it comes out because he's affiliated with Mixer now and Mixer is a Microsoft thing. So they're going to use him as like uh, the face of all the social conventions for Halo. Uh, not a fan of Fortnite streamers usually, but that means that there's going to be a lot of hype around Halo MCC when it comes out on PC. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be reading a snippet. It's not all of the article, but I'm going to be reading a snippet. This is in no way talking shit about the developers. This is just um, my opinion on something related to the later development and the later release of um, Halo MCC. All right, we'll get into it. So this is in the part of the article. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, many, many, yeah, part of the article that's called Halo Insider MCC flighting update. What it means by flighting is uh, test runs, basically. You know, like a beta, basically. Um, and many people have been curious about flighting. What goes into it? Why we focus on one key feature area at a time? And why we haven't flighted reached to Xbox One yet? They've actually done a few betas for, I think, one or two betas for PC already, but none for Xbox. And people have been confused um, because it's a. You'd think they'd cater to the Xbox players first because. That's what MCC has been run on, on Xbox players. Um, but, and why we haven't flighted reach to Xbox One yet. The below section will go into detail around the reasoning behind our choices and why we have taken the path of flighting on PC first. Xbox flighting status. As has been stated previously, making any game is hard, let alone when you're dealing with 11 game engines and 7 complete games under the roof of one title sharing the same hardware resources. It is a pretty made. People talked a lot of shit about MCC when it first came out, but fucking, there's a lot of engines, a lot of game engines. You gotta think for the classic game engines and the remastered game engine, that's two game engines in one, and you have to run it on all one thing. On consoles, the weakest shit consoles are, so... Um, same hardware resources. One key goal that has been a part of bringing Halo Reach into MCC is that for Xbox One, the team has been attempting to bring Unreal Engine 4 Online for new character customization options on Xbox. A lot of people have been, including myself, just want the Halo Reach customization. We don't want packs, we don't want it like Halo 4 where you just get the entire suit of armor in one. We want to mix and match, we want to unlock armor and we want to use the armor we want. I want my fucking EVA helmet, I want my skull on my EVA helmet, I want the big fucking armor pauldron on one side that Emil has, um, and I want the uh, the chest piece with all the fucking grenade shot things um, loaded onto it. That's what I want. Um, and they've heard that loud and clear, but it's not as simple as just copy and pasting it into the game. Once upon a time I thought it was... It's just, an, it's, just a, it's just a menu, it's just an armor customization system, but I think from reading this, I'm not no expert, but from reading this it goes a lot deeper, and it's a lot more intrinsically linked to the mechanics of the game and the engines. Um, but yeah, attempted to bring Unreal Engine 4 online for new character customization options on, uh, on Xbox. You can read more about the... Yeah, you can read more about the progression system in the May and June development updates. This, however, has proved to be quite challenging as MCC, that counts for Master Chief Collection for any PC noobs, 
uh, was already close to memory limits running on the original Xbox One consoles. All right. When it first came out, it was already pushing memory limits. Memory most likely means, in this sense, RAM, which the Xbox One has nothing of it. It has 8 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes of RAM. That's fucking nothing. Just for a point of comparison, the PC that I came on and I'm recording on right now has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, four times the normal Xbox One. Um, but, yeah, memory limits on the original Xbox One consoles could mean, yeah, GPU memory as well. Um, I've got a tab up right now, actually, I'll cut to that. The Xbox One is powered by an AMG Jaguar Accelerated Process new Unit API, so it's not even a real GPU, it's an integrated GPU, which is just like a mini little chip attached to the central processing unit, with two quad-core modules totaling at blah 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 blah, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, not even DDA, DDR4, I've got DDA, DDR4 RAM in my PC, most PC gamers do have that. Basically, just not a lot of power is what it's saying. It's saying not a lot of power. Um, and the Halo MCC, originally, when it first came out, before any of this Halo Reach talk and stuff was, was uttered, it was already running close to memory limits on the Xbox One consoles. Um, and that was sometimes apparent. I don't remember any... I don't remember any low frame rates or something, even when the game first came out. I remember a couple, actually, but that, I think that was, they found that that was more to do with server problems and stuff. There was never any, like, campaign memory problems, but I do remember on the original Xbox One, they had to downscale a bunch of the resolutions, like, Halo 2 Anniversary ran at, like, 1300p, so it was, um, just above 720p, it wasn't even 900p or 1080p, um, just to get 60 FPS, and it looked really A-list and like squiggly lines everywhere when you looked into the distance. Um, it was only when it came out on Xbox One X that it really looked. It looked good anyway, but when it came out on Xbox One X, and they brought out the enhancement patch for it, uh, that's when it really fucking sh shone, and that's when it looked really, really good. But even the Xbox One X doesn't have that much memory. It has 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's only four gigabytes more than the normal Xbox One. Uh, and again, point of comparison, 12 gigabytes of RAM on the most powerful console in the world, Xbox One X, versus 32 gigabytes of RAM on a PC like mine. Uh, this isn't me bragging, I'm just saying point of comparison sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I'll continue on. Bringing the entire progression and customization system into Master Chief Collection also requires memory to be used uh, to run additional Unreal Engine 4 engine. Oh, to run the additional Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 4 engine. Currently, a lot of progress has been made in getting it up and running, but the title is still not within memory constraints to properly run on the Xbox One. In order to flight on Xbox One, we need to be within these limits, otherwise instability will be an issue. Meaning the game will cr crash a lot and there'll be a lot of low frame rates, or they'll have to drop the F um, resolution down even lower than it already is. Uh, until the team has an adequate solve for this unique issue, flighting on the Xbox One will continue to be delayed. That being said, the team is pushing hard on a solution as they want to flight the Xbox One build as soon as possible. Until then, though, flighting will continue to remain solely on the PC build. Now, I'm making this video for a couple of reasons. One, there's going to be a lot of fucking Xbox kids. A lot of Xbox fans. Um, bitching about this. I was one of them. It's like, why do PC deserve it? We've, we're the one that kept it alive for so long, and... Which is true on one side, but exclusives are not good for for the gaming industry. They're not, um, I mean, keep off the PS4, people. That's just funny. <laughs> it's just hilarious that they're not getting this game. But let, let it on PC. PC flashes games out so well and so much. Just look at Skyrim. Um, but basically, this is another example of consoles holding up game advancement and te uh, technological advancement in games and in the gaming industry there's another example of it i talk about it a lot um and i'm very unbiased because i was i played xbox for many many years and then you guys know but some of the new viewers won't know uh at the end of october last year i switched over to pc and about four months ago i saw my well no, no about two months ago i saw my xbox and completely went on over to pc before that I was only going on PC occasionally. I was, I was splitting the time between like 50, 60% to 40%, 60% in favor of PC, 40 to Xbox. Um, so I was still playing a lot of Xbox. Now, coming over to PC, I have seen 
how much more powerful PCs can be, and they're not that much expensive. They're really not. People say, oh, it's so much more expensive. It, you make the money back in the long run because games are so much cheaper, and the, your, your experience of them are just so much better. They're way, way better, um, and, and way more way more enjoyable. And what, as I've got a PC, I've really learned that, I've really learned how much consoles, but not all consoles, just mainly the, the least powerful consoles, being the PS4 and the Xbox One. The, the plain vanilla ones, they hold up advancement in games so fucking much, because I would wager if if uh, 343 Industries didn't have to cater to these fucking lowest end consoles right now, we'd have this. We'd have Halo Reach on Master Chief Collection already. It would already be out if they, if they only had to upload, if they only had to make it for Xbox One X, PS, uh, not PS4 Pro, Xbox One X and uh, PC, it would already be out. Or even better, if it, they only had to make it for PC, it would fuck off the Xbox fans, but if they only had to make it for PC, it would have been out six months ago. It would be ready. It would be done. Because um, games on PC so much easier to develop for because you don't have to do the optimization you don't have to squeeze as many frames per second in as possible you don't have to work on all this upscaling and downscaling and you know reducing the frame uh, reducing the resolution to get 60 fps so you put that in the hands of the games people get the game they analyze what kind of hardware they have and they tweak the game to what they want if they want if they have a, a really good pc then they can max it out and do 200 frames per second and if they or on like a family PC that isn't as powerful, they can put it on 30 FPS, 1080p, or whatever. Um, consoles, the, the the floor of consoles has always been this static method where it's just so locked in, where it's like once once the game's out, you're, it's out, and then you have to stick to that resolution and that frame rate. And it's very rare that post game release they change anything about the resolution or the frame rate. Meaning they have to spend a lot of months and a lot of weeks and a lot of years set, setting up. The, the, the optimization, the resolution, the FPS, because they know that once it's out, it's out, they can't change it. If there's massive problems, they can't do anything. They can tweak it, they can drop some assets, maybe drop shadow quality and everything, but it's the, it's very difficult once the game's out to go from, say, all right, we won't do 1080p, we'll drop to 720p, 60 FPS. It's very different, uh, difficult to do that big of a shift. And even if they do, they'll get a lot of people bitching about it, you know? And it's always that case of some people don't mind playing 30 FPS to get fucking, let's say, 8K or something. Some people aren't that massively obsessed with 60 FPS. Like, it's become this thing where everyone cares about it so much. It's amazing, and I really do love it, and I wouldn't play any game on 30 FPS since coming to PC. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, you, it's impossible to make everyone happy, um... Because some people don't don't want 1080p, you know, 30 FPS. Some people want 720p, 60 FPS. Some people, vice versa, you know. Some people want 4K support for 30 FPS. You know, it's so hard to. There's all these different opinions and all these different play styles. It's so hard to fit into one um, optimization method, and that's one of the flaws of, of uh, consoles. And this static method for consoles really is just holding the gaming industry back, because this. We basically, uh, you know that term of um, the, the group's as strong as its weakest member. Or, you know, like packs of wolves. Packs of wolves will always put their weakest and oldest members, wolves, like animal wolves, weakest and oldest members at the front so that they don't get left behind. Then the whole pack moves at the same speed at, at you know, whatever speed that those old, elderly, weaker wolves are moving at it's it, it's an analogy that really applies it's uh the the, the packs is as weak or as slow as its slowest member or weakest member uh, and that really does apply to the gaming industry right now and has done really for uh, since the revolution the the re-emergence of pc gaming over the last sort of seven seven or so years um no matter how many advancements in fucking you know ray tracing technology i know it's it's flawed technology but it's still cool technology ray tracing technology or 4k or hdr or just bigger more open worlds like battlefield 5 with more particle effects and just just every kind of advancement you could think from gameplay wise and graphics wise no matter how many of those there are it's always going to be held back and it's always going to be less of a priority and uh, dampened um because you know the weakest consoles can't handle that and obviously uh, more time 
goes in to developing these games and optimizing these games for the weakest consoles to make sure that the weakest consoles can handle it than the time that goes into pushing it as far as it can be making the maps as big as possible making the play count for each match as massive as possible making you know the, the games as beautiful as they can be with all these different graphics effects and particle effects and snowflakes and stuff um it, it it's always it's always been tampered down that side of things and focusing on all right how can we make the weakest fucking consoles run this game how can we make it how can we make you know the lowest tier run this game well and it shouldn't be like that it should be a meritocracy sort of thing where it's yeah some people will get locked out of new games it's just the reality of it it's you can't blame the gaming industry or the developers but it should always be focused on pushing it rewarding the best um performance rewarding the best graphics pushing it as far as it can go to the point where we can get games like elite dangerous and star citizen that really didn't do very well because their, their vision is just too big to fit the gaming industry right now they va they basically envisioned massive real life like you know real scale universes or yeah universes and galaxies that you can explore and star system you can have like these uh, capital ships and you can go around in flight squadrons and your ships and you can explore you know planetary surfaces and stuff a complete not an open world but an open galaxy for you to explore and fight different factions and aliens and stuff look up star citizen you'll probably fall on the fall in love with it but then when you realize what it actually became they got like 12 million or 13 million of crowdfunding money where people just gave them money for nothing they got nothing in return and it's still not playable it's not it's still not a game it still hasn't released and it's more like a tech demo more than anything just look it up. You'll see the vision that the developer had, and it was an amazing vision. And if if not for consoles, that game would be out already. It would be a massive success, and it would be out already, and it would be amazing. But it's not, because the gaming industry focuses too much on the weakest level tier. It's held back by the weakest things, and like the lowest tiers, and the lowest con consoles. And a, a curveball that's thrown into the mix is this Google Stadia thing, and... What is that other one? I think Xbox Maverick. I think Xbox Maverick. It's not, yeah, it's not Xbox Scarlet. It's Xbox Maverick, I believe, which is the all digital one where it, it does most of its processing in the cloud and you just stream the game to console. Um, it remains to be seen whether or not that will help or it will hinder. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's gonna be good. I suppose it was. It could be good because it's more of an open thing. People can just turn it on and decide. All right, how good is my internet? Sort of thing. All right, I can stream this level of texture quality or this level of shadow quality. Maybe it's good. Maybe maybe it'll contribute towards, like I said, making the game industry as good as it be, can be, rather than as bad as it can be. But uh, yeah, I saw this article and it just really made me think of this and it really validated what I've said earlier on. I've been saying it for ages, what I've been saying for a long time, and I'm sure other people have said this too, it just validated it, um, and improved it, it's, it really is the case of, like, what, it, it remains a, a thing, it shouldn't remain such a thing with PC game becoming so prevalent, well, being held back by consoles, and even the people on normal Xboxes, you have to agree with me, yes, the lowest Xboxes and lowest Playstations, yes, it would be annoying to be cut out, of the newest games and not be able to run the newest games but it's just reality we can't just stay in the same fucking you know stay in the rut where the games don't advance much we have a, a, some nicer looking snow and more realistic shiny looking water with each game and stuff it's not supposed to be like that we, the the gaming industry is capable of these massive leaps and we could have these amazing games much earlier if companies didn't have to cater to these lower tier consoles and i used to really love the idea that xbox went along where it's everything's cross compatible now where you can have xbox one you can have xbox one s you could have xbox one x you could have xbox maverick you can have xbox scarlet um and they're all going to be able to play with each other and stuff and i used to love it the idea of a an all-encompassed audience i used to love it but the problem is these mass, these more powerful consoles. It doesn't just apply to PC game, gaming, but these more powerful Xboxes and stuff that inevitably going to be held back by the oldest Xbox One. 
and buy the oldest PS4. I don't think PS4 is doing that open platform thing. It's a bittersweet thing. It's a cool idea to have it. Okay, everyone can play. No one's locked out. Massive audiences. So, you know, everyone's playing with each other. So game populations are going to be bigger than ever. Cool idea, but the way that it's being implemented probably isn't a good idea. I think they need to go full pelt towards, like, full, they need to fully focus on that all digital aspect of things. Um, if they're going to do this all-encompassing thing because otherwise it just doesn't I can't see it working and it's always going to be this thing of the 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 slowest is holding back the fastest the weakest is holding back the strongest and it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't I used to hate the idea of console generations and I still do but the one merit of a console generation is it fucks off the old consoles it gets rid of them they've had their life done they're over let's advance the games you know what I mean now I still don't like them uh, the better way of doing it is an open platform and upgradable platform and self-optimizing or yeah, self-optimizing platform uh, like PC. That is the way to go. But console generations, they have their merit compared to this all in all massive large audience. And as they say in this, like as they say, I, I'll, I'll reiterate what I said before. As they say in this, like Xbox. It would be on Xbox already if they didn't have to cater. That's in a roundabout way. They're saying we could. It would be on Xbox. At least the betas would be on Xbox already if we didn't have to cater to um, the weakest console, the weakest Xbox One. But it's just not powerful enough right now. And what scares me is not only is it delaying the release for all the other X versions of the Xbox and the PC version. Not only that, but they're talking about. Um, character customization options they're probably try trying to go along with the the halo reach armor customization which was one of the greatest probably the greatest multiplayer customization system i've ever seen it was amazing it was just implemented so well um and what they're talking about is the way that they're talking about it is they've they've put that in up for the master chief collection but it just won't run on the the master chief collection on the normal xbox one there's not enough memory there it won't run so what's probably going to happen and this isn't talking shit about 343 industries i love them they're amazing um but what's probably going to happen is they're going to um, they're not going to be able to put this full halo reach customization system in they're going to have to peel it back to be more like halo 4's customization system or just like the halo mcc multiplayer customization system where you can just select packs of armor like sets of armor and there's no uniqueness or variety or personalization or self-expression with these different armor pieces and mixing and matching and everything there's it, it there's none of, there won't be any of that anymore and the thing is if they take it away for one xbox they take away for all the versions they can't just put one version of the customization on xbox one and then another on xbox one x and then another on xbox one uh, another on uh, pc what's going to happen is we're not going to get the halo reach customization system because fucking the weak normal xbox one can't handle it um so we're all going to get stuck with some reduced crappy multiplayer customization system that does not do the halo reach system justice one thing i'll say is it's either halo reach or it is not it's not halo reach just because it has multiplayer that looks and feels like halo reach it's halo reach if it's halo reach um what always annoyed me was the lack of customization system uh, options in the master chief collection it didn't annoy me too much just because the halo 4 armor just looked like shit they look like you know rip off bionicles like the armor and stuff it just did not look very good um and the halo 3 stuff it looked better than the halo 4 stuff but i wasn't that interested in what my spine looked like on halo 3 ever really anyway because there wasn't that many options and they did look you know they certainly look more outdated and a little bit older i was but i was always interested in what my spine looked like on halo reach and it was one of those things, it was one of the driving forces of the game. One of the things that made it so popular was um, grinding to get this new armor piece. Or, oh my god, look at, look at, he's got the flame helmet. Oh my god, I gotta, unlock, I gotta unlock that, right? I'm playing more matches, you know what I mean? Oh shit, I gotta get better at the game. I need more credits to unlock that helmet. I want the Brigadier helmet, you know. I want the EVA helmet, I want the skull and stuff it was a it was it was just this amazing thing that it was a grind but it was a good grind it wasn't like an mmo grind where it's a grind and you don't actually get anything for it you get a staff that's called something different but it's still the same fucking staff it was a thing that would go with you through every single multiplayer match from then on 
it was a new a new new set and completely new look and i think that was a really really great way to go i have yet to see another multiplayer customization system that is better than that or even equals that it's amazing it's perfect you don't get a customization system like that in a multiplayer game ever you just don't nothing comes close to it the only time you get something that comes close to that is when it's a single player rpg and it only has to cater to one player skyrim would be the one or like the i don't know the witcher or something something where you can pick your armor you don't get it in multiplayers. You, you never really have. Not in old games, not in new. This is what was so great about... I've been playing a lot of Planet Side 2 recently. Even Planet Side 2 doesn't offer that. It was what, one of the things that was so great about Halo Reach is it offered you this. It gave you this... This... Um, this option. It gave you this, this ability to make it spot and look exactly how you want it. And, and I just thought it was really cool. And it led to clans and stuff. Clans of people dressed up as ODST troopers... And, you know, which the, the clan system was really, really cool because it led to a lot of cool clan raids and battles on the Forge World. And speaking of Forge World, if we're talking about... They've said that Forge World, that one or another great thing about Halo, isn't going to be in Halo Reach at launch on PC and on the Master Chief Collection. It's not going to be in it. It's not going to be a part of it. And that scares me because um, if they're taking away customization, what do you think they're going to do to Forge World? The Forge World is a much heavier, much more harder to run, much more intense thing than different armor pieces. So if they're taking away the option to mix and match armor, what do you think they're going to do to Forge World? And why do you think they're saying that it's not going to be in at launch? What scares me is, I'm not saying we won't get Forge World, and I'm not saying we won't get Halo Reach customization. We'll get a, a perverted, warped version of it that doesn't do it justice, and it would just be better if we got no version of it at all, so that we could have it in our memory what it was really like, um, instead of it just being like this fake version, or this, you know, sort of diluted version, where it, it tries to be Halo Reach's customization system, but it, it, it's not the same, or like, you know, instead of unlock, being able to equip one shoulder pad here, different one there, different helmet, different variant of the helmet, skull, headband, whatever, or like a, a piece, or like an antenna, or whatever. Instead of it being like that, what they spoke about in the past and hinted at is that it's just going to be a set of armor. So you unlock the EVA set of armor. You unlock the Mark One set of armor. You unlock the um, ODST set of armor. And no one wants that. We want to mix and match. You know that was always one of the great things about uh, Reach's customization system. It was the um, the pick and mix style to it, and it does make me fearful for. Um, Forge World, because as I say, what do you think is harder to run? I'm no expert, but just use common sense. What do you think is harder to run? This massive, what was an open world that you can tweak and change and edit at, at the click of a finger, or different looking pixels, different looking armor. What do you think is going to be harder to implement? And another thing is the custom games browser. That was another great thing that about Halo Reach was all the customization options, uh, not customization, uh, custom games options. Custom games brow. I, I, I don't know if there was a custom games browser per se. No, there wasn't. But there was so many customization options for different game modes and different maps and stuff. And there was there wasn't a browser where you could join games, but there was a, a a list of all the most popular game types and maps that you could download, and then just invite all the recent players to it. It just makes me fearful because if if they're taking away and minimizing. Um, armor customization in favor of the weakest Xbox. What do you think they're gonna do to the massive open world? As I said, massive sandbox world. What do you think they're gonna do to um, the idea of a custom games browser being implemented to the game, or to this massive list of popular game types and game modes and, and maps and stuff? It just makes me fearful, and it, I think more people need to talk about this so it's less of a thing. Great thing about YouTube, when you're not getting censored, that is. Um, the great thing about YouTube is everyone can have the say and people's voices can really be heard. One of the main places that 343 Industries and just game developers in general look for, uh, look in for player feedback and fan feedback uh, is YouTube. It is. It's the internet. It's YouTube. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't want I'm not hating them at all. Like, I, I love 343 Industries. A lot of people hate them. Because they're not Bungie, but look at what Bungie's done. You know what I mean? Like, Bungie's made a bigger mess of Bungie's work than 343 Industries ever did. Um, I think that they've done a decent job. They've done a very good job. I've always loved the Master Chief Collection. I just want to see it... I, I, I want to see a good... A 
a good version of Halo Reach. I want to see Halo Reach and more, not Halo Reach and less, if that makes any sense. I want to see Halo Reach, but with better graphics and bigger explosions and, you know, better performance and nice looking battles and stuff and maybe a mode that supports a bigger play count and obviously a less bitchy version of Armor Lock as well. But I want to see the original product in the game. That's what I want to see. I want to see the the original Halo Reach implemented in the game, and I want to see it. I want to see it good and everything. I think what what, what could be the solution to this? I don't think just click the, at this point they can't click the fingers and say, "Oh, you know what? Normal Xbox One users and Xbox One S users, you're not having this anymore." Fuck you. They can't say that. What they could do is they could delay the release of Halo Reach on those consoles. It will piss these little whiny bitches off. But hey. If you don't like it, upgrade. You know what I mean? Every, everyone else shouldn't suffer because you, you haven't upgraded. You know what I mean? I'm not saying everyone who has a normal Xbox One is a bitch. I'm saying the people that complain about it. Like the people who complain about a delay for a video game. It's good. It ends up in a better... Results in a better game. Um, but yeah, that will be my solution to it. It would be to delay the release of this game on the Xbox One and Xbox One S versions and to focus primarily on the Xbox One X and the PC and getting it out there. Many Xbox players have the Xbox One X, the most powerful Xbox One currently. Um, and all the hype surrounding this is around the PC version, okay? Three for three, Microsoft, please listen to me, okay? Focus on the Xbox One X and focus on the PC versions. Um, not to say that don't release it on the Xbox One or Xbox One S. You've already said, you've already delayed it on the Xbox One as it is. If people are happy with it now, they'll be happy with it for a bit longer, they'll but hopefully they'll understand it. Pro, pro, like a delay uh, and prolong the development on Xbox One and Xbox One S. Put some team members on that, developing it in the background, and just give it a longer trajectory of development time. Give it more development time and focus on just getting this game to its peak, you know, potential or as close as to that as you can get it when you're developing it on Xbox One X. Get it to get it out there. Get it. Get, get, do it justice. Put a custom games browser in. Put Forge World in. Put armor customization in, and just get it out there. It's still gonna be on the Xbox platform, and it's still gonna be on the PC platform. Just get it out there, and give us, um, give it, give, give the Xbox One and Xbox One S players. Give it, give it to them three months later, four months later. It might annoy them, but the largest majority of people right now are playing on Xbox One X and PC. And those two are the platforms that are going to get streamed the most and made videos out of the most and reviewed on the most. No, very few people are going to review it on the base Xbox One. They're going to review it on the Xbox One X and the PC to see what the graphics look like and what the performance is on the best, highest, most you know powerful uh, versions of the game. That's what the main demographic is on right now. It's on the Xbox One X and it, it's on the PC. That's Those will be the biggest, biggest groups of players and biggest groups of fans right there. Appease those guys first. Get it out first. Sort it out first. Don't let us you know, be, keep be waiting on this game. Put everything that needs to be in, like the custom games browser and uh, all these custom games and custom maps that we used to have and proper Forge World and proper armor customization. Get it out there. It will get hyped up when it comes out on PC and Xbox One X. And like I said, the hype, that, that hype will carry it through to the release on the normal Xbox One and Xbox One S. That is my solution to it. Might not be flawless, but that's my solution to it. And that way we get Halo Reach, but we don't get a, 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 a fucking, like a mobile, a mobile version of Halo Reach. We don't, you know, like Elder Scrolls Blades. We don't get like a minimized version of it just to cater for the weakest uh, platforms. That's my opinion on it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Um, if you have Twitter, share this to 343 Industries or anyone involved with Halo MCC on Twitter. That not, not just to get me views or not, I'm not being egotistical or anything. Not to freaking stroke my ego. I'm just saying the more, pe the more people that share this and like this and comment on this, the more likely it gets seen. And I think this is what's best for Halo. I cannot wait to play on PC. I'll stream it so much. So I want to see it good, you know? I want to, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be really, really good. And we've waited long enough. And I say we have waited for long enough. Talking about, like, to get Halo Reach on the MCC. But PC gamers have waited even way longer than that for any kind of Halo on PC. Um, so, yeah. I think that's how you solve it. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Leave a like. Fucking hell, this video's long. 
I need like a playlist. Just Qui-Gon rants for way longer than you should playlist. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Share the video. And I will catch you in the next video or the next stream. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining.